Hey GED students, I had a student PJ send me this question on Facebook and she was feeling a little mystified. Let's take a look. It says the area of a circle is 42 square feet. Find the radius to the nearest tenth of a circle. Well, no wonder PJ was confused. We as students are used to going the other way around in this problem. We're used to having the radius, someone tells us what the radius is, and then using the radius to find the area. But this problem is asking us to work backwards. Start with what we think of as the answer, the area, and move backwards to what we think of as what should be given to us, the radius. So when you're moving backwards, algebra is super duper helpful. I wouldn't try to do this problem without a GED formula or without the formula. If you do, you're going to be trying to memorize a bunch of steps, memorizing how to work backwards. And so the first thing I would do is take a look. This says that we know the area of a circle and we are to find the radius. Well, we know a relationship. There is a known relationship between the area and the radius of the circle. And that is that area of a circle formula. Now you might say, Kate, I don't know the area of a circle formula. Well, good news for you. <laughs> it's on the GED formula sheet. You don't have to have it memorized. You get the formula sheet when you take your test, but you do need to know where to go to find that information. So that's the first thing I would do. Look up that GED formula sheet. Very first section you see is area, and you'll see right there under area of a formula, we see this, or I'm sorry, <laughs> very first section is the area section, and under area of a circle, you'll see this formula. A is equal to pi, that little symbol is called pi, r squared. And even though it might look foreign to you, all the mathematicians in the room just cheered. I don't have to know what to do. This formula will tell me what to do. All I have to do is plug in my known information, what I know. So let's go back and look at the problem. What do I know? Well, notice this 42 is what? Well, the problem says that's the area of the circle. I know my area. Now careful. A lot of students don't like plugging in uh, on the left hand side. They always want to plug in on the right hand side of a formula, but area is what I know. And so this 42 needs to replace the A in my formula. That's my substitution step when I replace letters with known values. Now I never move equal signs. I can also replace pi. Pi is not a variable. It's not some something that changes. It's a known value. Pi is actually a number. Now, it's a long, complicated, ugly number, 3.14159, yada, yada, yada. It goes on and on forever. Uh, but the GED allows you to just use that lovely approximation of 3.14. And again, if you don't know that, it's there on your formula sheet. It says pi is approximately 3.14 so that you don't have to have it memorized. Now, R is the thing I don't know. So in algebra, when we don't know something, we use a letter. So I'm going to use that letter. And I'm never going to change symbols in my formula. So now I've just done what I call my substitution step. And that's all you really have to know how to do uh, when you're using formulas. You have to know how to substitute in. And then it's no longer a geometry problem anymore. Now it's really an algebra problem. Now I'm solving. I'm solving for R. R is my mystery. Um, in algebra, when we're solving, we work to get that letter alone. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work to get that letter alone. Now, in order for that letter to be alone, I have two things to get rid of. I have this 3.14 and I have this square. I need to get rid of both of those things in order to isolate R, get R alone so I know what he's equal to. Okay. Remember when we're solving, we work that order of operations backwards. We move any numbers adding or subtracting with the letter first. Well, neither of those things are adding or subtracting. Now we move anything multiplying. See how that 3.14 is shoved up against the R squared? The 3.14 is multiplying with R squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide the 3.14 away. I do the opposite of multiply. I divide. Now you say, Kate, can I do that? Well, you can literally do whatever you want to an equation, uh, but you have to do it to both sides. So I'm going to divide the other side by 3.14 as well. See how my algebra skills are coming into play here? Uh, now let's see what I get. 
multiplying by 3.14 and dividing by 3.14 are opposites, they cancel. So all I have left on the right hand side is r squared. Now this is ugly math. I am not even trying to do 42 divided by 3.14 by hand. This is why you always get a GED calculator when you're doing this style of problems. And so I'm gonna type this into my GED calculator, 42 divided by 3.14. And I get this really long, ugly number. Now, I'll leave the whole number in my calculator, but I just don't want to write it all down because I'm so lazy. All right, let's see, 13.37 dot, dot, dot. Okay, now I'm almost done. A lot of students would want to stop right here, but careful, R is not alone. I need him totally and completely alone in order to solve for R, which is here, the radius, find the radius, okay? And so I have to get rid of this square. Now, a lot of students look at this, they say, I don't know how to get rid of a square. Well, remember, getting rid of something is all about inverses. It's all about opposites, okay? So if you don't know your inverses, you should put this into your notebook because this is the key to doing algebra, okay? So the inverse of add is subtract. Most students know that. The inverse of multiply is divide. Students are good with that. But a lot of students don't know that the opposite of square is square root. If you want to get rid of a square, you should use a square root symbol. So let me bust out a different color so you can see it. I'm gonna take the square root of the entire right-hand side. You say, Kate, can I do that? And again, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. I'm also gonna take the square root of that number. All right, let's see what happens after making that little change to my equation. Square and square root are opposites, so they'll cancel. R will be alone. And now what I need to do is take the square root of that ugly number that I have in my calculator. And it's really uh, a little complex to learn how to do that. If you've never done square roots before, you might wanna check out my uh, video on how to use the calculator to do square roots. Uh, but quickly, how we do it is first you press that green button that says second on it. And then you press the X squared button because right above that is the square root key. So the square key is in green, and anytime you want something green, you have to hit that second button. So we'll hit second, and then x squared. And then I want the answer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my arrow key to arrow up to where my 13.37 yada 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 was uh, until my calculator's blinking black on that number. I'll press enter to select that number, and then enter again to get my answer. So let me give that a try, second x squared and then arrow up to 13.37 enter to select enter again to get my answer and you should get 3.657 yada 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 all right so what did i just learn i just learned that my radius is about 3.657 uh feet here. Um, do pay attention though, a lot of times with circles, because of these ugly pies, we get these uh, funky long decimals. So super important to pay attention to rounding directions. So I'm going to go up and check out my rounding directions. It says find the radius to the nearest tenth of the circle. I do have some rounding directions. They want me to round to the nearest tenth. Now the nearest tenth is the place after the decimal, so I'm going to cut my number off right after that. I'm going to consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away, and I'm going to ask myself, am I halfway through my digits yet? Am I at five or higher? And of course I am. And so I'm going to say, well, I'm actually a little closer to 3.7 than I was to 3.6. So that is about 3.7 feet. And again, that's equal to my R, so that's the radius of my circle. The radius of my circle is about 3.7 feet. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.